Good morning and welcome to The Mix, the show where two pastors talk about a little bit of everything. Yeah. it's uh, It's been a while. It's been a little bit, yeah. We took a little break over like holidays and Christmas and then we just got busy in January didn't do anything. Busy, sick, all kinds of great stuff. Yeah. But we are in February. February is the time for Valentine's Day. We're talking a lot about love today and a lot of different aspects of that. And uh, I thought we would kick off this morning by talking about, you know, you and I are both uh, have spouses, have have ladies in our lives. And mm-hmm. how long have you guys been married now? Uh, 27 and counting. 27 and counting. Okay. So Allie and I, this is our 10th year this year. Just getting uh, started. Just, yeah. Just, uh, we're not fresh pups out of the gate, but we're still not uh, adult dogs, I guess. So, <laughs> But um, I thought it would be interesting if we talked about the grand gestures that maybe help to the ladies in our lives like us a little bit more. Because I think a lot of people are wondering, what did you do that caught Tara's eye or keeps catching Tara's eye? Oh, okay. So, like, I was – I don't know. I mean, I've done – I guess I've done a couple things. Like, I've written her songs because I play guitar and sing, you know. So You don't have a guitar and a guitar? I don't, yeah. I'm not – no, those are, those are songs that only get played for her. And um, I've written her a poem, which I recite her every Valentine's Day. Okay. Like, I recited it to her yesterday. And she's like, I don't know how you remember it. Because I don't know what's happening. Mm. And it's not a roses or red kind no, of thing. No, no. It's, it's, it's kind of the story of our dating and beginning of our romance and put into poetry. So it's kind of personal. I'll tell it to you after afterwards. You know, but, uh, um. Nowadays, if I really want to do something special, like I'll take her on a little trip or something like that, like I plan our vacation and stuff, she likes that, and um, I'll do some cooking, right? So uh, if I if I make like a special meal, I didn't this this time. She wanted some cake that I got her, but uh, last last Valentine's I made her like a really fancy meal and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of some of the stuff I do. Okay, okay, yeah, you know, there's not a lot of what are you doing. Well, you know, I do a little bit of, of everything. I like to think of myself as a little bit of a, a romantic. Uh, probably the thing that caught her eye the most was actually our first date uh, back, I bet it was 2012. And we, I was at college in Indiana. She was at college at Fredonia. Mm-hmm. And we kind of started talking online and everything. And, you know, she's kept in touch with me. So we said we liked each other and wanted to try dating. So one of the things that I did was I ordered a pizza from a pizza place near her college. Oh, did you put it like in the shape of hearts or whatever? No, 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 no. I just, that, I like just ordered cliche. a pizza from her college, and I, I paid for it online. And what then I ordered mean? a pizza from mine, and then we Zoomed, and we both had pizza. We had dinner together, per se. The last of the dying romantics. Of oh, no, it was, it was good stuff. And then I got her a, a <laughs> Vermont teddy bear with a crutch and a broken leg, and it says, I've fallen for you and everything, which she thought that was cute. Yeah, no, it's it's a uh, it's good gag stuff. The producers back. I know, there, you know, it's it's just because they don't know what it's like just yet. Maybe maybe someday they will. But someday <laughs> your princess will come. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but it's good times. It's fun stuff talking about is. that. I mean, it's it's great to have someone in your life and be able to just be creative. I think creativity is something you and I both value. Yes. Um, and yes. I think that's something our spouses kind of dread and value in us. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. They're never oh, yeah. really quite sure what's going to happen. So I think that's kind of part of it, too. Yeah. I mean, there's, d- there's been a lot of failures along with those successes yeah. as well. <laughs> keep it fresh or <laughs> so keep it on their toes, you know, mm-hmm. on your toes, so to speak. So you never know which one's going to happen. Yeah. 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 What Valentine's Day plans have you guys had? Feel free to share in the comments below or uh, continue to write to us. Uh, we'd love to hear the things that you've done to show how much you love uh, the person in your life or maybe the crush you have or who knows. Yeah, but just don't don't make them too fancy because then it'll make us look bad. Please. Yeah. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't want to, you know, up my game too much because then it's just exhausting. Espe- with kids today, I just, I don't know about that. There you go. Speaking of Lamore, uh, we are going to talk about our main topic today. We've been talking at church about agape love. We're, we're doing a series called It's All About Love. And with it being Valentine's Day week this week, and everybody's kind of talking about love, um, it was also Super Bowl week, which my broken heart, I was not wanting the Chiefs to win. They're kind of the modern-day 
Tom Brady and Patriots. Yeah, and that's what I was saying at the party. It's like this little circle around KC. Although, I don't know, there's like a bazillion Swifties out there that were all yeah. suddenly Chiefs fans, which uh, is yeah. kind of a weird anomaly. But anyway. Of course. Yeah, that that's a, a first of its kind for sure. I'm sure we'll unfortunately see more of that. But It's like $6.6, hey. I think, billion dollars that, that she's brought in the NFL. Oh, yeah. This is a side note. So oh, they're yeah. loving it. But yeah. yeah, and it's like <laughs> I, I don't mind. Like the relationship's fine. I don't mind if their picture comes up there and stuff. I, I think people need to chill out a little bit. But, you know, it's, it's not been bad. But what was interesting – wasn't necessarily just the Super Bowl. It was actually some of the commercials in the Super Bowl. We usually get those funny commercials. Yeah, I didn't by think Doritos. there were a lot of funny, funny things it this time. They it kind of been going downhill, kind of downhill. just a, just a little, a little bit. Not as good as it's been like maybe five, ten years ago. But there was one commercial that caught a lot of eyes and has actually caused quite a bit of controversy. So there was a commercial that sure. came on called He Gets Us, and it showed a bunch of people washing people's feet. And it was meant to be a gesture of, you know, Jesus loved everyone. Mm -hmm. And it ended with hegetsus.com. But apparently there's been a lot of controversy, a lot of, a lot of people have not received it quite as well as oh, they sure. were hoping. And it's not just on, on one side of thinking, it's kind of on both sides of thinking. Oh, there's, yeah, it's been, it's been all across the board. And so, like, I've read things, like, personal, people from church, family, um, you know, theologians and other people, you know, I'm kind of friends, and we talk through some, you know, those mm. forums. And I, like, and all the way on to the left is part of the, like, there's a whole cultural conversation that's going around, around this commercial, really, it's kind of interesting, like, I, I just referred to you, kind of in prep for our discussion to that right, article right. from Vox, which isn't exactly a, you know an ultra conservative or any kind of you know traditional voice, uh, more li liberal leftist uh, as far as publication. And they were talking about that as well. So right. I, I think I think what when we were talking about what we're going to do for podcast, we, we thought about this idea of just trying to just kind of have a conversation around it and say some of the things that we liked, some of the things we didn't. Mm. Um, I, I think part of the cultural conversation, if I were to start there, I would say probably the biggest win is that people are talking about it. Yeah. Because I think I think we've increasingly grown into a, a detachment or a disconnect with the culture in the church. Right. Yeah. And there's people uh, in the church that, like, they just don't know how to connect with people in the culture. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and then there's a lot of people in the culture that have no desire to connect with the church. They're highly skeptical. And, like, the article at Vox was kind of uh, really il illustrative of that, right? Mm. Where it's just kind of saying, like, this commercial is going to fail um, on two fronts. It's going to fail to reach the people on the left because the people on the left are tired of just these kind of little gestures mm -hmm. instead of actual movement, like right. reality. Right, right. Um, and the people on the right, it won't reach because they're too busy looking at the people depicted in there as sinful. So they they're not really interested in learning how to love them. That's, so that's the position on the left, like that the church just is disinterested in loving or caring for people. We're interested in telling people we love them. But we're not right. interested in actually showing that. And that's part of what our series has tried to been talking about a little bit. Like how do we actually put love into action? Like agape is that active. It, it's evident. Right. Love, it's self-sacrificing, it's costly, all those kind of things. Right. I, I think the the biggest criticism on the right, like theologically, I like I found it very interesting. Like, you know, Jesus didn't preach hate; he washed feet. Is is the conclusion of that, right? Mm -hmm. and I'm like the challenge. I think theologically, and a lot of people have picked up on it who were more biblically centered and understand the context of Jesus washing people's feet, right? And they're like, Jesus washed the disciples' feet. He wasn't washing everybody's feet. So I've heard that a lot right. from people. I don't know. Um, I, think the, I think the danger there is mixing the metaphor. I would much rather, if it was possible, to have depicted some similar ideas, um, but maybe more so, I think, like what I'm preaching actually this week is the parable of the Good Samaritan, right? Right. I think that's a more poignant example of what it looks like to love someone who is much different than you. Well, so what do you think they were trying to communicate in that commercial? Because it, it, it's obviously clear that um, it, it's not being received 
in the way that they were intending to to begin with. So, so yeah. what do you think they were trying to do, and and what specific? You kind of pointed out some of the yeah. things in there that kind of made it miss the mark. Well, so you, it what were they who trying you ask, to do? Right. So, if you ask them, like if you go to their site and look at what they were <laughs> saying they were doing, is they're trying to um, point out that that Jesus is Jesus cares about you and your situation. Um, uh, he loves you. He he he. He wants to interact with you. Uh, he desires, you know, some relational connection, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the the thing they're going for. Um, oh, I've read so much nonsense around it. You know, there's there's a lot of strong feelings, and and, and I'm not I'm not going to give it high a high points for biblical accuracy in right. that sense because it does mix the metaphor. Yeah. It does wrench away the symbolic and intentional gesture if there's carryover in washing the feet the most carryover is probably not in loving but rather in serving right because that's what jesus is doing like the context of this just so everybody's clear the context is jesus is washing the disciples feet it's this last supper his upper room right while he's doing this the disciples are having an argument about who's the greatest right <laughs> right so and he's like do you understand what i've done for you and they're like yeah but then there's another theological side of the whole foot washing thing. Like Peter's like, no, nah, like you can't. Like this is so scandalous for Jesus to take the position of a slave, right? right like right. a slave washed feet, and he's washing their feet. So Peter's like, no way, like you're not washing my feet. And Jesus says, what? If I don't wash your feet, you have no part of me. Right. So then Peter's like, hey, you gotta wash all of me then. Mm -hmm, <laughs> you right. know, like he's all Mister All or Nothing, right? And I think that's how a lot of people are when it comes to these conversations. They're all or nothing. They don't. They don't tend to understand some of the complexity that's being illustrated here, too. So the foot washing is more to show the message um, to the disciples or, or to Christians these days that, that it is through serving that we show our love. Well, serving is the, is the attitude and the posture, right? Right. And so what I hear a lot, <coughs> and it bothers me in conversations in the public, especially in theological center circles, is... A lot of, a lot of the maybe the theology of the Pharisees, right? Like you can't do that, mm. um, you can't say that. Um, my uncle posted an interesting thing. He's a retired pastor, and he was talking about where Paul was kind of asked about that, where people were preaching things, but they weren't quite accurate theologically. Mm -hmm. um, and Paul says, like, I don't really care. Like, if Christ is being preached, then I'm okay. I'm for that, right? I think it's Philippians he's talking about that. Mm. I just celebrate that Christ is preached. Um, and so I think the value, if anything, the best value out of this has been that it started a cultural conversation. And, and contrary to what you might imagine, I don't think it started a conversation between people in the church and people in the culture, which incidentally is where the conversation doesn't happen and needs to happen. Right, right, absolutely. But instead, it started like this conversation over here with people in the church. They're like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe, you know. And I hear a lot of those accusations, like, you know, the, the, the claims, like, theologically, this is way out. These people are super progressive. You know, this is, they're hijacking Christianity, mm -hmm. you know, these kind of things. And I'm like, okay, so I can agree with you, but I'm not going to give it high scores for the theological accuracy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's mixing the metaphor. It's losing some of the, the personal and intimate nature, the symbolism. Mm -hmm. Even if you go to the theological richness of Jesus, you know, with Peter saying, like, if you're not washed by me, then you don't have no part. Like, there's a, there's a part of repentance. And uh, that, was the, that was part of the message that's missing. Mm -hmm. Like, I think there's a real... I don't know when I say fear. I would s I would say um, more than fear is just a little bit of the church has lost its way on how to have conversations with people mm. um, about how to relate to God, um, what it means to be a sinful person, but what it means also to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's part of the conversation. Like when you see sinful people around Jesus, he's – He's talking to them. He's caring for them. But like a woman, you know, who is probably one of the greatest sinners, she comes and washes Jesus' feet with her tears and hair and perfume, right? Mm -hmm. And those kind of things we see. So I would I would say that 
that's part of what's lost in the cultural conversation. And the, I think the Vox article on the left kind of points out that the, the world doesn't want to hear about the need of repentance. And mm-hmm. I think that's part of the challenge is like, how does that message get conveyed? And there's, I think there's two main vehicles. One is the Holy Spirit just speaks to people's hearts and convicts them, and that's ultimately mm-hmm. God's job, right? Right, right. Um, but secondly, I think that the Scriptures call us to build relational bridges. So the, the difficulty with, you know, if you, if you look at uh, that commercial again, what you'll see is that there's, there's a, a huge juxtaposition. It's very intentional. Like even the attitudes, the face, the posturing, and even the positioning of people, like you have people who are less than, you know, good or righteous or mm. you know whatever, like they're very opposite. Right. So you've got it like sanitizes this idea like we're over here, we've got it all together, we're super righteous, and but we're gonna wash the feet of the unrighteous, you know, and right. it kind of f- furthers that separation and dichotomy. Right. I think the better posture. Well, let's talk about that. The better posture, if you read the commercial. It's also on the same page. If you redid the commercial, yep. to, to truly communicate what they were trying to do, how would you do it if you had I think it would creativity? Be, well, one, I would get rid of the mixed metaphor mm-hmm. um, with the foot washing thing because it's problematic, I think, theologically for a lot of people. And they missed the point mm. of what the conversation that should be having. Like they're so bent on the theological side of things, they can't have a clear head to – maybe see what conversation is missing between us and the culture. Mm. Uh, So I see that a lot, especially in like hardcore. And and I'm not willing to sacrifice theology here, Mm -hmm. right? That's not at all where I'm coming from. I'm not like a progressive uh, or what people get accused of being progressive of just trying to like just, you know, milk toast the gospel. Right, right. I'm not trying to do that. Um, I guess if I remade it, I I would want to see people coming alongside Kind of like you see in the parable of the Good Samaritan. I think it's the best illustration of what it means to love your neighbor. Because remember, the person that challenges Jesus, he's a teacher of the law, he's a Pharisee, right? And Jesus uses two people from his own family, tribe. He uses a priest and a Levite, right? Mm -hmm. This is the tribe of Aaron. Like He's using his own family members, uh, the religious elite of the day. Mm -hmm. And and he's done all the right things. Like His theology is solid. Like, But in order to justify, he knows he's not quite right, so he tries to justify himself, and he says, well, here's my neighbor. Mm-hmm. And then Jesus kind of expounds on this with the parable of the Good Samaritan and said, well, who, which guy was neighbor, the guy that walked by this dude that was beaten and dead, or the Samaritan who had been mistreated by him forever and actually paid for his care and, you know, patched up his wounds and, and got him to a doctor, so to speak. Something that a Samaritan would not do. Well, because well, the idea is, like, would you, would you reach out to the person who's mistreated you all this time, mm. right? That's that's the, the scandalous part of this, and mm. they have to sit there and admit that a, in Jesus' story, that a Samaritan who they consider to be the person who needs to follow the illustration of that, they need their foot wash. Like they they're sinful, they're horrible, they they they're the worst kind of person, right? Right. And Jesus points out that that person was actually more righteous than the than the person who wouldn't stop and help and and had all the excuses from Sunday, which were you know not to do anything. So. If if I could have anything come out of this, I would I would love for further conversations with people. Mm. I don't mind talking the theology, but I'd love what I would really love to see and try to foster is the is the conversations across this gap that exists between the church and the culture, right? Mm. And I think that yes, the Holy Spirit does that. He brings people across that gulf which is ever widening. But I think the church if I could do the answer then uh to me, I use the issue of bridges, like relationships to bridges that the gospel can walk across. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's really incumbent on us to actually be a friend of sinners. Be It doesn't mean affirming every sin as no big deal because we're all sinful people. That's the place to start. Like we're all in this together. Mm-hmm. And then telling people that the good news is that God loves us and he'll forgive us of our sins if we'll repent. And most people who are in sin and they're and they want to be that they love that that's what they that's what their desire is because that's the desire of the flesh and they're pursuing it right they're not ready to hear about repentance they don't want to anyways right, right. so the holy spirit has to do a work but i would say this that building a relational bridge into that person's life is probably one of the most powerful ways to do that and uh, rosaria butterfield's 
story. You know, we've talked about that on the podcast before, mm-hmm. you know, the, the thoughts of an unlikely convert type thing. And so I think her book, something of that style. And um, she talks about that. Yeah. I, they, this pastor loved her first mm. and showed genuine concern. And I think that's what I'm hearing on the left is like this, this whole message is falling on deaf ears on the left because they are absolutely convinced as far as like th- the people who are not part of the church, they're absolutely convinced that the people in the church do hate them. They have no interest in actually tangibly loving them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a fair criticism of yeah. the church today. Yeah. And we need to pay attention. So, you know, I, I asked the question, like, who is this commercial for? And and, <laughs> and it depends who watches it. Like, if you watch it as a church member, you can have one of two conversations. You can have the theological, it's not right, or you could have the conversation, hey, maybe we should have some conversations about how we reach across this gap. And, and if you're on the other side, maybe it'll open up some conversation there as well if we have a relational bridge. So that's how, how I think of it. Conversations that can be difficult. Maybe you have some questions on how to start some of those conversations, or yeah. maybe you're in a situation now where you are kind of being viewed as either someone who is feeling like it's the righteous telling the unrighteous, or on the other side where you're not quite sure exactly what to do. Feel free to post your comments and ask your questions. We would love the opportunity to be able to address the things that you guys have, the questions that you have, because um, uh, I know that there's been many times in my life where. I haven't quite had the words to say, and I've had to kind of build that relationship uh, in order to... Uh, yeah, I, w- I would just say the happen. one caution is that building the relationship isn't the the task. So right, it's right. It's, like, it's not like, oh, I built the relationship, so now I can do this. <laughs> right. No, the, the, obj- the relationship is the object. Right. Like, right. That's, that's the point. Jesus was a friend of sinners. He called them to repentance, always. But he was a friend of sinners, and that's what the accusation was he was known for. Right, right. And so... So uh, not like a missionary friendship. I, I befriend them so I can bring, bring them to Jesus, per se, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, would, I would love for our care to speak louder than our condemnation. I absolutely, guess. absolutely. Uh, we would love to answer your questions. Uh, please feel free to send them. You can email them, too. Uh, put them in the church box or uh, put them in the comments below. We'd love to read them and uh, look them over. Sure. Well, we are a little over on the time, so I think we're just Let's going to ask... It. One quick question. Oh, okay, we're going to do one. Then. Okay. All right. One quick question. And the question is. I have no idea what it's going to be. So. I know. I'm totally making this up off the top of my head because it came to me. And the question is, flowers or chocolate? Well, I prefer to uh, look at flowers and eat chocolate. Mm-hmm. As long as it's dark chocolate. Okay. Because no chocolate is not as enticing as milk. Yeah. But if I had to pick, I'd go with something to eat milk. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I just needed to know so I can do that. <laughs> Dark chocolate's fine. There you go. Might there you actually go. get rehired. We'll see. Hey, all right. Yeah, you know, I've been, it's been a long time <laughs> since I've been fired. Yeah, so it's yeah. been a couple weeks. So yeah. We'll get there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that is all the time that we have today, but hey, thank you for joining us today. We hope you guys have learned a lot. Again, please send those questions. Feel free to approach us as well. We would love to be able to sit down and talk with you guys about this stuff, and uh, I'll tell you what, we will will be coming back in March uh, with another video, so thank you for joining us. We will see you next time.